You can play trumpet tomorrow. No. Oh, I promise I won't play any trumpet tomorrow. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, do you remember your first setup, your first drum kit? I do. I remember my dad had a, a kit. My dad's a drummer too. It's a, I think it was a 24-inch bass drum, and with one of those mufflers on it that, that attached to the oh, rim, you know. Circular ones. Yeah, and then it, it sort of padded on the bass drum, and it would just sort of take up some yeah, of the sound. Yeah. And just a felt strip, you know, nothing inside, kind of a boom, you know, and uh, just a snare drum. Uh, it was sort of that. Uh, Mother of Pearl, Black Mother of Pearl finish, and, and, and no toms at all, just a, a ride cymbal and a big set of hi-hats, like 16-inch hi-hat cymbals. They were Zildjian hi-hat cymbals. I mean, my dad always played Zildjian too, but it was like just a 22-inch ride and 16-inch hi-hat cymbals and a snare and a bass drum, you know, and it was 16-inch. Yeah, just somebody's helmet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Welcome to the forum and welcome to Greg Bissonnet.
Sure, like I wanted to know, uh, in the Modern Drummer interview that you did, you talked about how 4-4 four, four time, uh, or maybe just groupings of four, there, was, there were syllables that you were talking about, like takadimi. Takadimi is for four, is, and takita taka, taka, taka is for five. Now, does that mean five, like, is, is an artificial grouping, like a five over four, or would you count five four time that way too? No, no, it's like uh, in one beat, taka, 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 it's like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, over five, four. one, two, three, four, five, one, two, like that. Okay. And when you did the things on the opposite side of the, could you demonstrate a little how you did that uh, with the opposite? The, the South Indian way is like, tak, din, na, ta, di, get that down, din, din, na. Now, so this like a four four. One, two, three, four. So you always know like this is the the last one. So if you want to make that dim now. Now you know when to speed up or you know. Yeah.
Thank you very much. The, the very first recording I did, or, or actual record, was with my father's band. He had a Dixieland dance band. Um, I can't remember what it was called, but it was... Uh, I remember the whole record was done in a day, as they were in those days. So we had a session in the morning, which was like one side of the record, and a session in the afternoon, which was the other side of the record. Straight to maybe 8-track or 16-track. And I must have been about 13, I think, 13 at the time. And I remember, because I went to the session, I, I forgot my cymbals. <laughs> There's my set of cymbals still sitting at home. Oh, he was annoyed. Oh, He man. was angry. Often when we're on the road, when we're doing tours and stuff, it is very hard to practice. I mean, you do get to play every night, which is absolutely wonderful. But after that, then you go out and your kit's packed up. So, oh, all right, okay. So you go home, have something to eat and sleep, get up, and then get on a plane, go somewhere else. And the first time you see your instrument again is doing sound check. So you get there and you think, oh, great, you know, but it's like, all right, you know, let's do a sound check. Right. And you can imagine with me, you know, ding, 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 ding. 19, 20, 21 sort of things to hit before you finish your, shout, your sound check. And then you think, yeah, oh no, no, bass player. And you, oh, no, guitar player. And then if everything is working well, then maybe you have a sort of little jam. But then it's like crew's got to go and eat. And they do not appreciate a very loud drum solo going on while they're having their only meal of the day. They do want some peace before the next three hours of mayhem. So. We're sort of uh, reduced to practicing in our hotel room on a pillow or a practice pad or, in the case of uh, Greg's dressing room, a full-blown uh, setup. <laughs> Triggers, racks of equipment. <laughs> no. Um, everybody has their own way of doing it. I just, as long as I remember to take a pair of sticks, um, let's use you all I need and maybe a little practice pad. Now, the thing is, it's all very well, but you think, right, you know, got to loosen up. So you, you get there and you go, right, okay, go get really fast tonight. Yeah. <laughs> but that doesn't really do any good, I don't think. It makes you very tense, and it's not really the way to warm up. So the way I like to do it is more a control way. I like to actually practice quite slowly and gain absolute control over the sticks hands, fingers, whatever. And this is just a, sort of like a very quick routine, typical of what I would do. I would go through about four different rudiments. Single, double, triple, quadruple or four stroke. Now, I would start off very slowly. The idea is to be able not to hear the changeover. Hopefully, that's what I try to achieve. Very, very smooth, even notes, in time. No speeding up, no slowing, slowing down. Just smooth transitions between the four little uh, horrible little rudiments. So this is sort of typically what would happen. Then I go a little bit faster. A little bit faster. A little bit faster. You'll notice the slight lack of four-stroke rolls now. A little bit faster.
And then, once you've done that, I then go back, slow again, and try some paradiddles. Paradiddle is the most amazing invention, maybe apart from the aeroplane, but... Because um, whatever your right hand does, your left has got to do. I mean, okay, you know. Yeah. That's really difficult to brush your teeth with your left hand, but anyway. So, single paradiddle. Double paradiddle. Triple paradiddle. And if you put these all together and play two of each, something really interesting happens. <laughs> Brilliant! Brilliant! That's it. Nine eight.
I heard you mention something about when you were young and you met Buddy Rich. You, uh, he told you some things about tensioning a paddle a certain way and also practicing on a pillow. Could you could you elaborate a little on that, Dennis? My name, man. Uh, when I first met Buddy, I was like six years old or seven years old, and he talked about <laughs> a lot of drummers rely on on uh, rebound for for speed, and uh, the thing to to build at natural speed is to play on pillows. It's because the pillows don't have any rebound. Right. It's like whatever you pull, put into it, you got to pull yeah. out. <laughs> so that worked on that worked for me as far as like natural natural speed. Uh, the foot pedal thing is is uh, he was the only person I ever seen or saw it that can do 30 second notes without a spring on the pedal at warp 12 speed. <sighs> Take the spring right off. Take the spring right off the pedal. So therefore, the drum head now is acting like a spring. It was acting yeah. as a spring. And so you did that when you were. Uh, jamming and stuff, you tried taking the spring off and making yeah, it? Yeah, I, I did that like when I was probably around like, um, 10. Yeah. That explains it.
Good luck, Gertrude. 